Hello out there everyone, how are you doing today? I'm Daniela Jumel, for those who may not know me, if you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome. It's nice to see you again. I thought I would uh, carry on this vein of being inspired by other videos and other what other people have observed about their experience on this kind of awakening. And uh, I thought it was an interesting notion that uh, a fellow um, contributor to the community out there made a video trying to mm, discern from uh, his experiences with uh, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and Dark Night of the Soul, and what those three things are like, how they're similar, and how they're different. And um, it's a very interesting notion to do because it's so different for everyone, right? We all kind of figure our way through these things because of different reasons, right? We all have different life experiences that can cause these similar problems. Um, and yeah, I thought it was a, a, an interesting idea because we treat depression. Depression is kind of understood a little bit more in the mainstream, right? Because it's so painfully common. And I mean, my God, you can just walk down the street and ask anybody that you meet, do you have depression or anxiety or any of those kind of things? And like nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a yes, uh, it seems. Um, it's very common and we treat it kind of like, yeah, on the surface, a lot of times we don't ever get to the, the reason for the, the disorder, if we want to call it that, or the disease. We get to, we kind of treat it like, okay, you have depression. Um, let's try you on an SSRI medication and see if that helps. Uh, and we might move into an NDRI or maybe a tricyclic if we have to, or an, a, God forbid, an MAOI, you know, like we have all these medications and stuff, but that only kind of treats the symptom, right? It doesn't treat the underlying cause because we can't effectively treat that, right? Because that's something else. And... I think in my experience, from my understanding, um, from having been a patient for this sort of thing, uh, that there's a struggle there um, because you want to, um, well, you wanna feel better, right? But at the same time, you don't know how to feel better because you become used to, at least for me, I became used to feeling miserable and feeling caught in that feeling miserable um, and not really understanding why. Now that I've kind of understood, okay, there's a difference here between what a dark night of the soul is or more properly referred to as ego death in Zen spiritual tradition. Um, it's it going through that dark night helped me get to a place now where I can see the difference. There is a subtle nuance there because when you go through the dark night, you realize just how um, dependent and um, uh, identified you become with narrative stuff. I know I've been going on and on about narrative these days, but I guess this is the reason why, um, because I'm figuring out what that is um, and trying to share that a little bit with everybody else here. Um, that was my problem. I would go you know, in my younger days, I would go and I would tell, you know, 
the GP or the or the psychologist, sometimes a psychiatrist if I needed to, um, I would tell them, you know, about the problem, right? Like like you do. And I would often leave a session feeling worse than when I got there. Why? I understand now why is because I would tell the story or a part of the story or whatever. And it would just reaffirm in my head, yeah, that happened and it was awful. Stop, right? Like <laughs> that happened. It was terrible. It changed my life. It taught me something and showed me something I don't want to see and that nobody should have to see. Okay, now what? And that's sort of where, where it would lead me down to feeling worse again and more depressed, if you want, because I was just reaffirming that, yep, this happened, yep, still happened, still happened, it's still there, mm-hmm. And it's so confounding because, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. And eventually, I'm pretty sure um, the, that was the reason I ended up being diagnosed later with uh, borderline personality disorder, because I was, I was doing what they wanted me to do. I was telling them, you know, the medical professional, this is what happened. This is why I feel this way. It's not a mystery to me. I know why. I know what happened. Are you magically going to make it disappear? I don't think so. And then I would get defensive with, <laughs> with them and be like, why am I telling you this? This isn't helping me. This is just paying your friggin' bills. This isn't fair. This is making me feel worse. And because of that, and because of my inability to get out of that super snarly, angry place, they decided, okay, you're just, you have a personality disorder because you're not getting it, right? And I understand why the medical establishment did that. But I also understand they were missing that understanding that <laughs> it's not about the events. We can't focus on that. We can't, 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 can't. Yeah, it's okay to discuss, absolutely, but you can't focus on it because that's only reaffirming all of that crap. That you're, that you're feeling upset about, and it's not t showing you that you're capable um, of, of moving beyond that. You don't have to stay stuck there. That's the thing, and nobody was telling me that. Everybody was just like, yeah, that's terrible. Here, I'll give you a higher dose of uh, Ativan or whatever. That's how I was being handled. And that taught me, inadvertently, that I was broken, I was sick, I was unfixable. What does that do to a person? Makes them feel horrible, right? <laughs> Makes you feel like you're a piece of crap, like you're unfixable, you're unhelpable. You just have to live with this like it's a, like it's a permanent um, terminal illness, really. I, I used to say that. To people I'm it's like having terminal cancer this is gonna kill me one day because I have to pump my body full of drugs just to get out of bed and sort of kind of live I guess um, but I live like crap and I don't feel good um, but after kind of accepting okay this is something else. This is something greater. This is a, you know, a dark night of the soul much later in life. Once I realized um, that, yeah, rehashing events, going over a narrative, completely useless, not helpful in the long term. Um, I need to 
understand just what that means and how to get out of it. And that was what The Dark Knight really showed me. It, it showed me more, much more clearly the world around me and what had become of the life I was living three-dimensionally. And it helped me discern um, why certain choices were made and how th that got me to this place. And it just became more obvious to me, okay, that doesn't need to be there. I, and then decide, okay, what do I need to do with that? Is it just garbage? Can I just throw it away? Do I have to, you know, is it worth a little something to somebody else? Should I sell it for money? You know, like, <laughs> it's not a perfect analogy, forgive me, but it's kind of like that with 3D stuff, right? When you go through your stuff, you've, you know, accumulated something, a lot of stuff, and you have to decide eventually, because space is finite, you know, you're like, okay, well, I collected a lot of stuff. I don't need it all anymore. I'm never going to use it. I'm never going to enjoy all of it. Um, I guess I can donate it. I can throw it away if it's garbage. I can sell it for a little bit of money to recoup my loss, and then it'll be out of my life. You know, things like that. Well, that's sort of like what I've been doing uh, with, uh, with those events. Not that I'm repressing them or trying to throw them out, get rid of them, but I just understand that they're that they're there. And w once I made enough changes three-dimensionally, all of a sudden, the events of the past stopped being in my face all the time because because the surroundings are different. You know, uh, I left, I left my marriage in, uh, in July, this past July. And that was something tremendous that was holding me back. And I hate saying that it doesn't make me feel good because I wasn't married to a jerk. He's not a bad person. He's a good man. Um, but the dark night showed me that's your problem. That's your problem. That's a big problem in your way that's holding you back and it's making you hold on. That's what holding you back means to me, the expression. It's holding you back in the past and holding on to those negative events that, that have become the identity of the person. And that's why I'm sure I was diagnosed uh, with this, you know, untreatable condition and just kind of left to, to figure that out on my own completely, which I had to do, but at the same time, I'm glad that I had to because I know what, now I know what works and what worked for me. And I feel like it gives me a bit of authority on the matter. And that's why I'm kind of sharing it with you, is that it's, it's all about transcending that mental narrative. This series of events happened to me. This is my occupation. This is, you know, all of these things that we say that we are right? I'm a baker. I'm a woman. Uh, I'm a separated woman who used to be married. Uh, I have a child. I, you know, like we, we say all these things that we do <laughs> as an occupation and all of that as though that's who we are. And something the Dark Knight of the Soul teaches you is that you're none of that stuff. None. Zero. It has nothing to do with you. That's just what you're doing three-dimensionally and the roles that you have. But that's not who you are. And getting to that has made all the difference. Um, I am going to go into an appointment with my psychiatrist tomorrow. 
and I'm going to run this by him and see what he has to say because he's pretty insightful about this stuff and has been treating me and seeing me for over a decade now. So I'm pretty sure there's enough baseline data there that you know, he could look at it more like a doctor, like a scientist, and kind of go, right, yeah, probably, or, you know, steer me and, you know, help steer me in a different direction, maybe, but I don't think he will. I don't think he will. I think he'll agree that that, that is a big part of this, is realizing you're not the disease. You're not. You're not the dark night of the soul. That's not you. You're not anxiety. You're not depression. You're not post-traumatic stress. You're not those things. Those are just a byproduct of the events that we are identified with, that we are programmed to identify with. And the benefit of the dark night of the soul is realizing that's what that is. It's programming. That's it. Of course, it's hard to reverse engineer yourself, don't get me wrong, but it is doable. You can. So if you're struggling with this stuff, as many of us are, um, know that it is possible. I know how impossible it feels. I, I so do. But I'm telling you that it isn't impossible to, to figure it out, even though you're not figuring anything out you're just knowing and and that's the that's the hard part but that's what meditation teaches us that's what listening to um, spiritual teachers is teaching us right um, so when you're all tied up in knots like that just tell yourself right okay I'm losing perspective here this isn't great I gotta I got to get out of that and you know go and do like listen to a, an Eckhart Tolle guided meditation I do that all the time and it helps a lot with just okay that's crap I don't need to listen to this I can just listen to him talking about ripples of water or, or you know whatever all those things that he will talk about just to kind of keep you keep you focused on what you need to focus on instead of all the other stuff, right? Um, so helpful, so, so, so calming, gets you out of that anxious, terrible feeling, and you start to be at peace with things as they are right now. Nothing has changed, but you can still find that peace in it because you're in a present, present state of mind, not in a past state of mind or in a future state of mind, right? So, if you're in a tough spot, go and do that. And that's about the only thing I can really effectively say that has helped me. So, I hope that that is helpful and useful to you in some way. I'm sure I'll have more information in the future all about it because this is a lifelong pursuit. So, <laughs> I will see you in the next video.